Okay. So we're back. And uh, if you're using Binder, probably your kernel has died. So uh, you can click on the no kernel, select Python 3, and restart that. Hopefully your Binder hasn't died entirely. But uh, that happens. So just to recap, we talked about how to define functions, talked about how to use them, and uh, a few of the, the nuances of dealing with functions, some of the tricky things that you might encounter. And uh, we can put the mood lighting here. Um, now we're going to continue on to introducing script files. And the important thing here is that this is going to be one of the ways in which you can easily save the functions that you've been, you've been producing. We've been playing more or less exclusively in the Jupyter Notebook world as far as Python goes, but um, even in last year's version of the course, we didn't do anything in Jupyter Notebooks, and we basically only, after the kind of first introductory weeks, we only dealt with these script files in Python. So it's good that we kind of introduce these and, uh, and show you how you can use them and things like that at this stage. Maybe you've already encountered Python script files before, but the general idea is that it's a list of the commands that you would normally either type into Python cells in a Jupyter notebook or just type into a Python console to, to do some things. A script file is essentially just that list of commands and typically it has the file extension .py to identify it as, as a Python file. So we can make uh, a quick example here. The way that we do it in Jupyter Lab is if you go to File up on the top left and, uh, and then to New, oops, um, you can then choose Text File. So there is no option to do New Python Script File because that's just not there in Jupyter Lab. But if you do Text File, click on that, you should see that there's a new tab that appears with untitled.txt in the name of the file there. So that is our new text file, and um, it turns out Python script files are basically just text files, but in order for them to show up as, as, a, as a Python file, you just have to change the file extension, and we'll do that in just a second. So we've created this new um, text file, and if you just go to the, you know, if you have the, the Jupyter Notebook open and go back to the functions thing and just select the text here. We have this definition of the Celsius to far function that we saw before. And you can just copy that and paste it into our text file. So you can either go up to edit copy or just do you know, control C, command C, depending on if you're Windows or, or Mac user. And go over to your untitled.txt tab and do paste. You can put this in. Um, in like that. And so we have a function now. It's in this text file. This is just like a regular plain old text file. And um, what we can do at this point is rename it so that it has a useful name and, uh, and is recognized as a Python um, script file. To rename it, uh, you can right click on the, the tab where the untitled.txt is listed. If you right click on there, there's the option for rename file. And if you click that, um, what we can type in is temp underscore converter. And we want to change this .txt extension to be .py. So same as what's shown in the, the image in the, uh, the notebook for, uh, for this lesson. So we're just going to call it tempconverter.py. And when you click rename, you'll see some Jupyter Lab magic uh, that the, the syntax highlighting will now be enabled. So now you'll see def show up as purple, Celsius to far in blue, indicating it's the name of a function. Some numbers are showing up in green, and other variables are shown in black. So, um, so Jupyter now recognizes that this is, this is Python code in there, not just regular text. And um, so 
Yeah, now we've got this script file with a function inside of it. What do we do next? Well, first thing we can do is let's add a couple more functions in there just so that we have a little bit more useful uh, script file. And if you, again, look back here in the functions, dot, uh, the functions notebook for this lesson, scroll down just a little bit to the section on saving functions in a script file, you can again copy and paste this Kelvin's to Celsius and Kelvin's to Fahrenheit functions over to your temp converter dot py. I'm just going to copy and paste those um, like that. You could type them in, of course, if you wanted to, but um, it's certainly a lot easier just to copy, do a quick copy paste. Once you've pasted those in, you can then go file, save Python file, or do command S or control S uh, from, from the keyboard, and that will save this this Python script file. Is everybody okay with that part so far? Any any issues with the kind of copy paste making the text file? Looks good? Okay. All right, so we have now a list of three functions that are in a Python file. Nothing has actually been done with these other than they're just sitting in this, this uh, script file waiting to be used. And what we're going to do next is, is use them. But in order to do this, we've got to deal with one sort of slightly tricky issue, um, at least at this stage in terms of what we're doing in, in Python. This is one kind of tricky thing we have to handle. And that is the fact that in order to use these functions in this script, we have to make sure that the JupyterLab session that's running, or the, the sort of document that's active here, is actually working in the same directory where this temp converter.py file is saved, for instance. So uh, the way to figure this out is if you do in this um, Python cell within the section on calling functions from a script file, if you just do percent ls and then hit shift enter, this is a little thing called the magic command in, uh, in IPython. IPython runs in the background of these JupyterLab documents. And it will list all the names of the files that are within the directory where you're working right now, or the directory that, that this JupyterLab uh, or Jupyter Notebook sees as the active directory. Uh, how many of you see this tempconverter.py file in that list? Okay, that's good. Is there anybody who doesn't see it? Like if you're using a CSC notebook, maybe you don't don't see that file in the list when you do the percent ls. Nobody. Okay. The odds are that when you do the exercise or when you uh, start up a, a CSC notebook session, that probably won't be the case. You may not see that file there. And there's some instructions about how to change into a different directory so that you can make sure the Jupyter Lab is running in the same directory where this, this file exists. Since everybody sees temp converter, we don't need to do that, so I'm going to skip over those instructions, but just make note that they are there, uh, and maybe we'll add that as a hint for the exercise for this week, just to remind you that uh, if you're having trouble finding or, or getting issues with the temp converter script not being found, that uh, there is a way to, to solve that problem. Okay, so you can scroll down then to the section called Importing Our Script Functions. It's down a little bit from where we are working right now. And um, if you just scroll down there, there's a Python cell, and we can now import our first function from the script that we've, we've generated called temp converter. The way we can do this is we're going to say from, from temp underscore converter import and we're going to import one function in this case Celsius to far so what this says is look for some script called temp converter we don't have to include the dot py because that's assumed and when you find that script 
import the function called Celsius to var. And of course, if we go back to the script itself, we see that there is a Celsius to, to var as the first function that is, that's there. So if I do shift enter, I don't get any error messages. Hopefully that's the case for you as well. If you get error messages, maybe raise your hand and somebody can, can take a look and make sure that uh, everything is okay. But this import statement has essentially just defined the function in memory and it's now available for us to use. Same as if we had typed in the Celsius to far function again. It's now ready to be used, hasn't done anything, but, uh, but as before, um, we can now do things like print out something like uh, print the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit is, and then Celsius to far, and we'll put in zero here. So I know I'm typing quickly. Um, same kind of thing that we did before, almost exactly the same example. And now we're just going to use a function called Celsius to far here. Most probably those of you using Binder, your, uh, your session probably died, your kernel probably died um, while you were away. So the earlier definition of the Celsius to far function has probably, has probably gone away. But by importing it, you should now see that when you run this line, you get the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit is 32 degrees. So, um, yeah, anybody having trouble with that? All we've done at this stage is just imported one function from our tempconverter.py script and, uh, and we've run it. So that's cool because now as you create these functions, you can basically save them in something like a script file and have them available. It's kind of like your, your Swiss Army knife um, with all the different possibilities of things you want to do. You can kind of have something maybe called functions.py or whatever um, where you can start saving useful functions in a single script and reuse those easily um, within JupyterLab and inside of a Jupyter Notebook. Okay. Um, we can also import multiple functions. There's an example showing you from some script that you just separate the names of the functions by commas to import them. Um, that's you know something you might do. We're not going to show an example of that because it's not necessarily um, that common that you would import more than just one function or maybe one or two from a single um, script, but you can do it. What is more common, for instance, if you want to have access to all of these functions, is to do something like this. So you can do import temp converter as TC. So this is going to do two things. It's going to bring in temp converter functions, all of them, and it's going to, to change the name by which you can refer to the temp converter functions to be TC, which is a lot shorter to type in than temp underscore converter. So if we bring all of those functions in, now we should be able to do anything like Celsius to far, Kelvins to Celsius, or Kelvins to Fahrenheit, uh, as we have defined in our temp converter.py. We've imported them, and hopefully in your notebook you see that these little print statements are already filled in for you. So you don't have to type all that stuff in but just simply run them. And if you do, for instance, the first one, you can see it says the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit is, and then you see the name of this Celsius to far with the zero like we saw before. But now out in front, there's this TC dot. So this is the name of when we brought in this these set of functions um, from temp converter and called them TC, in order to refer specifically to the Celsius to far function that's part of the ones we brought in from TC, we have this TC dot out in front. If you remember back to when we used the math library in one of the early, probably our first Python lesson, 
we did math.sign. That was our way of indicating we wanted to use the sign function that is defined in the math library when we imported the math library. The reason that's important is because sometimes the names of the functions might conflict. So there is a sign function that's part of this, um, this library that we'll see next week called NumPy. There's also a sign function in math. And if you want to be sure of which one you're using, this is a good way to import because we keep that TC, for example, out in the front of the function name to be sure we're using the, the Celsius to far function that is part of what we've written in tempconverter.py. So anyway, these, all three, should work if you just shift enter, shift enter, shift enter, and you should get that output. Are there questions at this point? Do you kind of get the idea of the connection between this, this script file and what we're doing when we import it? Yeah, we're basically just saying read that file and any function that's defined in there, make that available to me. Um, so, you know, we could put in other things like than just function definitions. We could put in something that actually produces output. It's not a good idea. But you could put a print statement in here, and when you import this, you would see that output from the print statement get run. Importing essentially just says, Python, run this stuff that's in this script. In the case that you've got a bunch of functions defined, all it does is make those functions available to be used. And uh, it's really, I think it's sort of, of that simple. Um, but yeah, are there, are there questions or is there confusion? Yeah, Pepe? Uh, can you use the Yeah, uh, so there, well, actually the next topic is about modules and, and that's kind of, so answer is yes, you can kind of uh, separate and, and kind of categorize the things in, in your, uh, like in your functions. So if you have a large package, for example, matplotlib, which is the visualization package that we're going to use uh, in the, the last uh, lesson in this first period, so it is a huge set of tools and kind of visualization functions. So in, typically in those cases, you kind of separate different things into separate files and, and probably even to separate subfolders inside that module. Uh, so, so, well, you, you can, and it's also recommended that you actually separate things uh, when you have larger uh, programs. Yeah. Are there other questions? So um, one thing that I don't want to forget to mention um, is that earlier we had this example where um, we were going to run this function inside a function thing to do temperature conversion from kelvins to Fahrenheit. And uh, I had the situation that my kernel had died. And I went back and reran some of the cells to make sure that the functions I defined earlier did exist. When you define functions in Python, uh, it's an important thing to just be aware that defining the function by itself does not necessarily check to see whether other functions that you're calling inside of it exist and work. All it does is check when you define the function to see if there's any syntax errors. So if I said, you know, uh, made a function called magical unicorn, and it's going to take, um, let's see, puppies and uh, I don't know, kittens. Doesn't matter, right? It can be anything. Um, this definition is totally fine. I'm just making up some function called magical unicorn. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And puppies and kittens are both just names of variables. So that's all fine and good. But inside here, I could say that, uh, it should return, um, let's say, uh, what, would, what would be of interest to a magical unicorn? Um, I don't know. How about rainbows? Rainbows 
with puppies and kittens. Does it get any better than this? Um, so I'm going to define this function with just, just basically garbage inside of it, right? None of this stuff actually exists. There is no rainbows function, at least that I'm aware of in Python. So when I save this, it's not a problem. I'm just saving my temp converter. It's just a regular text file. Now I could put any kind of junk in here I want and save it. And if I go back here to where I import the function, um, I'm going to call it TC2. This, there's some rather detailed reasons why importing again doesn't automatically reload the existing um, temp converter stuff, but I'm going to import temp converter as TC2. When I run that, you might expect like, wait, there's no, unit, or there's no uh, rainbow function. Why doesn't Python throw an error message at this point? Well, it doesn't know that there's not a rainbow function. All it does is just check and say, okay, this is a function. It, does it have a def statement? Yep. Does it have a name? Yes. Does it have some parameters? Yes. Is there a colon at the end of the first line? Yep. And then is there a return statement? If all of those things are present, Python's happy at this stage. It's only that if I go here now, and I'll just add another um, Python cell here and try to do tc two dot magical unicorn and uh, puppies equals true kittens equals false. Now I have problems. Uh, oops, doesn't have a attribute magical unicorn. Mm, what? Magical unicorn. Okay, this is why I shouldn't have done, shown this example. Uh, module temp converter. Maybe it's because I've already imported temp converter. Uh, all right, I'm going to restart my kernel just because I know that's one way I can clear everything out. Um, just because I do want to show this example. So if I import temp converter as TC2 and try to run this, okay, now I get the kind of expected output, which is that when I try to use this function, it says the name rainbows is not defined. So there's no function called rainbows. It's only when I try to use the function that things like that will, will come up. So you might notice when you type in your functions and when you save them, import them, everything looks good. And then when you finally go to actually use it, then you see there's problems, and uh, someone mentioned this at the at the break, and I think that's a useful thing just to have in mind because when it comes to doing the debugging, you might think, well, no, there couldn't be anything wrong with my function because I imported it, and Python didn't didn't complain. But it's not until you try to use the function that it actually then checks to see that all of those components are are working properly. And now when we check, if we check the error message, actually, yeah. Uh, so this is typically the case uh, that you can actually track what is going on. Uh, so for example here, the Python is quite nice because it kind of shows me and try to explain what is wrong in this one. So it actually says in the, in the error message that okay, in this file temp converter.py there is something going on and then it actually even points out that okay, there is this kind of rainbows thing going on in the function, magical unicorn, but this rainbows is not defined. So you can kind of go and see what is going on in the, the actual files. Yeah, and that's a good point because it also, it even goes as far as telling you which line number the problem is on. So it puts this little arrow here pointing to line 13, where the return statement with the function rainbows is, is provided, but then it says, you know, rainbows is not defined. You don't always get the nicest error messages, but Python is a lot better than other languages, or than at least a number of other languages in yeah. terms of giving you a clear, useful error message that points you in the right direction. Yeah, so actually when you see errors and get exceptions like this, don't think that it's your enemy. It's actually your friend and it tries to help you. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, any questions at this point? 
So uh, if we do an informal poll, how many of you feel like you would be able to create your own very simple function at this stage? Good. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good because you'll get to practice that with the exercise for this week, so um, that's good. The rest of the lesson here on the function stuff is optional. It's a little bit more of um, a slightly more advanced topic, so you're welcome to go through and have a look at this, but we're not going to cover it in the lesson uh, today, for example. Um, we've got enough time that I think we will still be able to go through some of the stuff on modules, and that's maybe a good thing to do. Um, but yeah, do feel free if you want to go through and, and take a look at the rest of this stuff. Uh, I don't think the things in, in temperature calculator will be necessary for the exercise for this week, but if you're feeling like you want to learn as much Python as possible, um, you're, you're welcome to continue that way. Yeah. So yeah, let's maybe trade yeah. spots and uh, move on to modules. Okay, so we already touched a bit uh, about the word of module. Uh, so basically, uh, what we will kind of shortly describe is to kind of uh, introduce you what is a module and, and, and so on. So basically, as we already created this uh, temp converter Python script, so that is basically a simple module. It's just the one file that contains uh, some tools that you can use. So that's kind of a, well, quite typical way of, of doing things uh, in Python that you separate separate pieces of, of the tools and, and functions to separate files. Uh, module can be also not only a single Python file, but it can be actually many Python files separated into different uh, kind of uh, scripts uh, and even subfolders as, as we discussed. Uh, earlier earlier here so but let's uh, dive into uh, see a couple of examples still so in a similar manner so there are many different modules in Python that that have been uh, developed by other programmers uh, they are basically coming straight from uh, Python when you kind of download Python and if you use Anaconda which is the package that we recommend there is a bunch of different packages uh, or libraries or modules. So basically library module and package, those mean the same thing. It's just a kind of set of tools packaged into one, uh, one kind of module that you can use. Uh, let's take an example of uh, one of the module. So we basically can use different modules in a similar manner as we just did by uh, importing the uh, script that we did. So instead of actually uh, importing our script, we have this uh, bundled math library uh, or module that we can use. And inside this math uh, module, we have plenty of different tools that we can use. So when I uh, press math dot, so now instead of actually having the temperature converters that we had before, we have plenty of different functions uh, that are available from this package and they do different things. For example, we can say that I want to take a square root of some number. So there is this SQRT function. So I can actually take this one. I can also, well, double click uh, on, on the function name and it will choose that one. And then I can say that, okay, what is the square root of 81? Well, it seems to be nine and that's, that's correct. So that's kind of the, the thing that we already saw in the uh, earlier uh, that Dave showed you with the temperature converters. So there are a lot of different libraries that you can just pick and install and start using just in a similar manner as, as we saw, saw earlier. And Dave already showed this, but let's do it uh, another time. So one typical thing is that we can uh, rename 
the, the packages or the modules. So import mod, math as M. And now it's basically in our memory and now we can use that M uh, kind of shorter version of this math library. And again, with the M dot and tabulator, you get a full list of all the functions that are available uh, in here. And we can start typing uh, SQRT and it will auto actually autocomplete the things for us. And again, we can use it in a similar manner to, to uh, see what is the square root of 49. Yeah, there's a question. Mm, are you sure that the, the kernel, is, kernel is live, so that you have the Python tree? Uh, well, maybe Dave can come and can take a, take a look. Uh, there might be some cases where this doesn't work. Uh, typically, it should work once you have imported the, the module in the memory of the, of the computer. Uh, typically, when you, well, maybe let's take a note on couple of notes on that one. So typically when you are writing scripts, so you have some Python files such as this, and inside these, uh, your own kind of uh, function scripts, you can also use different modules, of course. So typically when you are writing here, and for example, using import math, and then say that math dot, and, and try to do the same thing, it doesn't actually work because you haven't, uh, you don't have that in the memory of the computer. So that, that is something just that you, you know. Uh, it starts working uh, if you have this math basically uh, imported into the IPython console. Uh, I won't go too much into details of, of this because I would need to explain a few, few other things as well, but just that you, you know that that's uh, how it works. And then, uh, well, uh, we have imported the math module as M. Uh, we can check what is the type of this. We can see that, okay, it is a module. And well, that seems to be correct. Uh, it is also quite typical uh, that you might want to not import the whole package the whole module uh, to, to your memory. You might have, let's say, thousand different functions and you only need one. So it might be actually useful that you don't actually kind of fill your memory with all that stuff, but only take that one piece, uh, one tool from the uh, uh, module that you need. That's also possible. And how we do that is that we use this from, so we take from some package or module, so from math import square root. So this is quite typical uh, thing to see if you, if you browse, for example, internet, uh, so that you only take few pieces from, from here. And when we execute this, what it does is that now we have in the memory and we can actually use this SQRT, so the square root function, without actually uh, specifying that we use math dot square, square root. So in this case, it's in a kind of a similar manner as we define the function uh, in, in the notebook and then we just start using it without actually calling any module. So this kind of works in a similar manner. So now we have this function uh, in, the, in the memory and we can use it without calling the math. So we can, for example, check that what is the square root of 121 and it seems to be 11 and it works just okay. So this might be useful, uh, useful thing to know. Uh, if we have the temp converter here, so I can just maybe, well, let's do it uh, in here. So I create a new cell. So just to demonstrate that I can also import only one function from our own script. 
uh, in a similar manner. So let's import this Celsius to far uh, function. So I can say that from temp converter import uh, Celsius uh, Celsius to far and if I typed it correctly I didn't let's check Celsius others to s so like this no like this and now we basically have that function in the memory and we can start using it so as you might know this now so kind of functions and and modules they are really kind of related to each other uh, and basically the modules are just scripts with set of functions quite typically there are also other things included quite quite often but that's kind of the the key idea for you to remember so that's kind of what is going under the hood in in some libraries or or modules that that you might use uh, then uh, in terms of plotting, so we are going to use a lot this matplotlib module uh, in the seventh week and we had a question that there can there be subfolders and kind of sub uh, modules inside one bigger module. So this is one example where this is exactly the case. So there is a lot of uh, functions included in this matplotlib. So let, we can basically say that import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. This is an import statement that you will see a lot and, and there's a lot of material uh, in the internet uh, like showing this same, same way of importing the matplotlib library. And here basically we have this matplotlib which is the module and then under there we have a submodule called pyplot which has a set of functions and, and tools inside there and that we typically shorten into plt because it's much easier to use this kind of shorter uh, uh, module name for doing things so no module named matplotlib interesting uh, hmm. Well, this should work. It seems to be somehow that let's try to import another one. Yeah, so it seems that we are kind of using a different kernel here now. Oh, the, the binder, uh, so it doesn't have these packages, but uh, don't worry, so this should work. Uh, and the, the main idea is that you can actually uh, kind of import also submodules from one bigger package. Is it working for some of you? Or no, no one? With Anaconda. With Anaconda, Anaconda it works, yeah. yeah. It should be okay. Yeah. Uh, is anyone using CSC notebook? Yeah, so on the CSC ones. Yeah, it works pretty. Should work. I uh, suspect it's probably because the when you have to restart the kernel in Binder, it probably is a little bit different than when you start a fresh Binder session or something like that, and that the modules are not. Hmm. Yeah, well, we, we need to figure that out. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that's kind of um, something how you can use modules. Uh, there are also kind of ways to uh, kind of get an idea what kind of functions are available for you. So the best thing what you want to do is that you go and basically search from the internet the, the module of that, uh, the, the documentation of the model that you are using. Uh, I will show that. 
quickly. But there is also a way uh, in Python how you can basically just see like what kind of functions are available, for example, in this math function. And we can call this dir uh, function. And then inside here we can say that print dir math. And now there is something. Yeah, I actually, yeah, I restarted the kernel, so that's why it didn't work. Uh, but when I have imported the math and I say that print dir math, so we get a get a list of all the functions that are available uh, in this math library. And then we can we have already seen this before, but we can use the help function to actually see like how should I use one of these functions. So we can say that help math dot sin. And now with this we actually get a nice documentation how should we basically use this function. So we should basically set uh, put some number in, in there and it returns the sign of x measured in radians. So that's a good thing to to know. Uh, but typically, so yeah, this way you can see some documentation from the module, uh, but what I kind of really recommend typically is that you use Google, for example, well, next week, uh, half of you are going to use a package called NumPy. So you can basically just Google Python NumPy uh, in here, uh, and basically there is a own website for this NumPy package and there is a documentation uh, for how to how to use this this package so this is the way how I typically kind of find information and there is uh, especially on the GIS part we are going to use something like 10 different libraries and they all have separate documentation so it's kind of good practice to know that you can find good information from the web just by well using Google or some other search engine to, to find information. And there are typically tutorials and, and, and so on. And um, well, we can, there's a functions by category. Uh, and well, here we can see all sorts of things. We can, for example, say, check that. What kind of, um, well, numerical arrays they are, and you get a list of all the functions and how they they work and, and so on. So just that you know that this this is the typical way of, of doing things. Then a quick note: what should you not uh, what should you not not do uh, is that there is possibility to import from some module import everything such as star. This is, this is possible and the, you might see some examples from the web where people do this, but this is really problematic in a sense that different modules and libraries might have actually functions with exactly the same name. And if you import something from math and, so, and all the packages from math uh, and all the packages from NumPy, they both most probably have a function uh, for square root and they might have the same name and then basically what you are using uh, is the function uh, that you imported the, the, the last so there might be confusion and, and kind of you might get unexpected results because the kind of the functions that you imported might overwrite each other so never use this kind of uh, approach when importing uh, functions even though you might see some examples of that. Of course uh, one example is poor naming so you can basically shorten for example import matplotlib as m and then you can basically use the same shorten, short version of math so this is also kind of where you get kind of conflict between the packages so that's also something good not to do. Yes. Um, cool. Uh, but that was basically a short intro to, to modules and I hope 
you kind of get an idea. So modules are just kind of a set of functions and the way how they are packaged in this under some some library. Uh, are there any questions about this at this point? Yeah, so the exercise for this week uh, is indeed focusing on the on the functions. And if we go and take a look at what do we have in here, is that for this week we have three problems. Uh, well, actually four. The first problem is that we would like you to give some feedback uh, about how things have been going this far. So there is a link in here for this kind of a Elomake, so a form where there is a couple of questions uh, for you uh, about well different things. So we would highly appreciate if you could uh, spend a few minutes and, and fill that form so that we get an understanding of how, how things are going uh, this far uh, and we can act upon if there is something that we would need to change. So that's the kind of problem zero. Uh, then we have three problems related to the actual programming. So basically we will repeat the things that we saw already. Uh, so we will create a temperature calculator, uh, basically having one function uh, that you should define uh, and do uh, temperature conversion from Fahrenheit's Fahrenheit to, to Celsius. And again, you need to replace this uh, not implemented error, which is something related to our grading system. And then there are a couple of questions that you need to answer uh, into this one. So the really first thing is you need to do is that you need to press the classroom button to actually clone the repository to your own personal uh, GitHub account. Then you need to clone that to the uh, Jupyter lab and, and start working on your own own uh, copy of the, the exercise. Uh, this should be fairly straightforward uh, exercise. There was, by the way, a typo. Uh, if someone of you already cloned this uh, earlier this morning, so there was a last example saying that if everything in your script is working properly, the following test case should work. Well, unfortunately, it was not working because there was a typo in the uh, function name in the example here. It shouldn't affect on how you should do things, but the print statement uh, didn't work. But I have fixed it, uh, but it, it hasn't updated to your personal repositories if you cloned it already earlier. So just a thing, good thing to, to know that this was the case. Uh, the second problem is kind of uh, taking the things from last week uh, so using the conditional statements and combining those to, to function. So inside a function, you can of course do many things such as uh, controlling how certain uh, values should be treated. And this is where you basically should write some conditional statements uh, to, to specify uh, what kind of return value the function should, should give to the user. So that's one thing. And then the last problem is taking also the for loops into, into, the, into action. So we have a kind of temperature data in the uh, exercise for problem three notebook. So here you have a list of values and using these values, you should basically convert those uh, numbers uh, to other temperatures and then classify them using the classifier function that you define in the problem too. And you should first uh, write a script called tempfunctions.py. So the things that we saw uh, on the last part of, of today and then uh, use import the functions from that script file into this notebook and then do the do the things that are asked in this exercise. And in this case, because you are basically using the 
Python script to do, do things. So you should also upload that Python script to your personal repository when you return this problem T3 exercise. And then there are again a couple of questions about, about the exercise. So three problems this week uh, and yeah, hopefully they should, they would be pretty straightforward things to do. Uh, do you have any questions about the exercise or anything related to the content of the lecture? Maybe just to emphasize that the uh, problem zero is really important for us to know how things are going because we're teaching the course this year more or less with the same kind of context as last year but using Jupyter notebooks and it's a bit difficult for us to know how comfortable you are with Jupyter Notebooks or whether you think they're useful and things like that. So uh, we would, would really appreciate um, that you take the time to, to fill in the, the feedback form. Okay, if there are no further questions, uh, let's stop for, for today in time for the first time, I guess, which is good. Uh, and tomorrow and on Friday there will be the practical session, so go there if you want to get some help from the assistants. Yeah, thank you.